Hello there, my name is Kaylee Jo, but you can call me CJ, and I am a theater teacher with experience managing both middle school and high school theater programs, which means that I am incredibly aware of the struggles that today's theater teacher faces, the fact that you wear many, many hats, and consequently probably consume a lot of caffeine. Over the years, I have devoted many, many hours to reading scripts only to find out that they were too mature, too immature, or just not feasible for my public school theater program to produce, and that can be a really frustrating waste of time. Therefore, in an effort to help out my fellow theater teachers and directors, I have compiled a list of shows that will put audience members in seats and therefore put funds back into your program. This video features three titles that fit the following criteria. Number one, it is appropriate for middle school, high school, and youth theater performers. Number two, it has strong name recognition. So whenever people read this title, automatically something is going to pop into their head. And number three, it has a medium to large cast of about 20 to 30 performers, which can be really beneficial for a public school program. First of all, we have Charlotte's Web. Uh, this is a heartwarming children's tale of a magical friendship between a spider and a pig and the links one will go to to help a friend based on the classic novel by E.B. White, which was originally published in 1952 and since then adapted into several animated and live action films. I personally have incredibly fond memories of watching the like 1970s animated movie whenever I was younger. Oh, I love Charlotte's Web. <laughs> um, the show is about 95 minutes long which in my personal opinion could be a little bit long for a middle school group, but is absolutely perfect for high school. But this just depends on the group of kids that you're working with. Uh, so cast size, the website says 12 people minimum, but that would mean most everyone would be playing multiple roles, which can work just fine. For me, I generally have more students come out for auditions than that, so I would want to disperse the parts more evenly. Therefore, without doubling, this script has roles for 14 named characters, that's four men, three women, and seven that can be any gender. And for me, I put characters like Wilbur, uh, Templeton, which is the rat, um, there's a farmhand as well. Um, so yeah, so several characters that can honestly be any gender, it doesn't matter. There's also three narrators who have a decent amount of lines and stage time. They're referenced as chorus one, two, and three in the script. So three narrator roles, 14 named characters, and then some pretty big opportunities for ensemble roles as reporters, photographers, fairgoers, announcers, and at the end, baby spiders, which are Charlotte's children. So in my opinion, there's a minimum total of about two dozen actors needed for this show, and it would be really easy to expand the ensemble, making this show suitable for around 30 cast members. That's about what I would choose to do if at all possible technical requirements. So this one has a really minimal set. We actually really only have two locations, which is uh, Fern's Family Farm and then the barn at the fairgrounds for Act 2. So really not a lot of locations and honestly those are very similar looking locations so you can reuse a lot of scene pieces between those two, those two locations. It is important to note that you need to be able to change the messages in Charlotte's Web. Whatever that looks like for you, if you have projection capabilities, this could be really great for that. This could also be a practical effect in one way or another. The cost for Charlotte's Web. So this is all done through dramatic publishing and scripts are $12.95 each. You do have to provide a script for every actor in your show. And then don't forget about you, the director, your stage manager, lighting, you know, think about all of the people who might need scripts for this show and know that they are $12.95 a piece. The rights and royalties are $115 per performance, which means any public performance where you are inviting a public audience or you are selling tickets. So for a rough estimate, if you were to purchase, let's say 30 scripts and then perform this show twice, then the total amount paid to the publishing company would be $618.50. And this number is going to vary greatly depending on how many scripts you need. My second show that is guaranteed to sell seats is Peter Pan by John Jory. This is an adaptation of the classic play and novel, and it is done in association with your stage partners. The cast size is super flexible. There's 22 named characters, and if you were to double those up, you could actually have as little as 14 actors in this show. 
plus the scene change fairies, which is the super fun role um, that are specifically in charge of changing the location of the show. So you could either throw some fairy wings on your run crew that you already have, or you can actually cast actors in those roles as well. But I think that's a fun little addition to this show. You could also add some more ensemble with non-speaking Lost Boys, Pirates, or some of Tiger Lily's companions. The technical requirements for this show include several different locations. We've got the Darling Nursery, as well as the Lost Boys Hideout and a Pirate Cove setting. So you can make these sets as minimal or elaborate as you like to. What I like about this show is, again, we've got those scene change fairies who make those transitions happen, um, which means that if your scene changes are a little longer because you're setting a lot up, I think the audience is going to enjoy it because they're watching that magic unfold. But if you want to keep it more minimal, what's really nice about these well-known titles is that your audience comes in already having some sort of image as to what these locations look like so they kind of mentally fill in the gaps if you choose to have a more minimal set. The cost to produce this show through your stage partners is $175 for the scripts. So your stage partners offers a PDF copy of the script and then you just print that off as many times as you need to. Please, other publishing companies, take note from your stage partners because this makes things so much easier and more affordable in the long run. So it's $175 for the PDF copy of the script, and then each performance is $85. So if you were to purchase the PDF scripts and perform this show twice, your total cost would only be $345 to the publishers, which is super affordable. I would like to throw out another adaptation of Peter Pan that I really like. It's by Craig Sidero through Pioneer Drama. It is also about 75 minutes long and includes around 26 actors. Um, the scripts through Pioneer Drama are $8.25 each, and then royalties are a little cheaper at $65 per performance. So for 30 scripts and two performances, your total cost would be $377.50, which is, what, $30 more than your stage partners. So there's two really similar options for Peter Pan. The final title I would like to share with you that is guaranteed to sell seats is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. This particular version is adapted by Tim Kelly and produced in association with Pioneer Drama. I really like Tim Kelly's adaptation of The Wizard of Oz because I feel like he stays really close to that original source material and it also feels very similar to the movie with the pacing of everything. I would like to point out that in his script, Dorothy's slippers are silver, not red. But it's worth noting that in the original story, her slippers were silver, but MGM changed it to ruby red because they were trying to show off all of their new color filming techniques at the time. But on the website, I see production photos of Tim Kelly's adaptation with ruby red slippers, which must mean that they gave somebody permission to change it to ruby red instead of silver. So if that's important to you, if you think that's something the audience members are expecting, then it sounds like you should be able to change it to ruby red to kind of pay homage to the film. The script is about 75 minutes long and in terms of casting allows for 13 minimum performers but you can really expand that with additional munchkins and poppies and winged monkeys if needed. I also really appreciate that the roles of the lion, tin man, scarecrow, and oz can be portrayed by any gender because it just gives you a lot more flexibility within your casting and I think it's really plausible that this show would hit a sweet spot right around two dozen cast members. The tactical requirements for this show can be kind of heavy because there are a lot of locations and also some pretty unique and specific costumes. But with that being said, just like I mentioned with Peter Pan, your audience is going to walk in with some sort of familiarity with the story. And so they're going to kind of fill in any gaps with the sets or the costumes if you didn't go incredibly extravagant or detailed with it. So you could absolutely keep this more minimal and save some money there. The cost to produce The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Tim Kelly through Pioneer Drama is going to be $8.25 per script and $65 per public performance. This means if you were to purchase 30 scripts between your actors and technicians and perform the show twice, your total cost to Pioneer Drama would be $377.50. If you enjoy theater education content, please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and break a leg.